Ja. My oh, apologies for that. Um, welcome this morning. We look forward to Valerie's leading us in worship. The, I would also like to make a point that some of our congregation join with us online. Um, and in particular, we wish to mention Cornelia and Willem. Cornelia has had her 98th birthday just recently um, and we welcome all of those people who join with us via the television. And Morris also had a birthday yesterday. <laughs> um, anything else? Oh, there's going to be a family event on the 31st of January Sunday. at, at 2, 2 p.m. in the hall and more details will be presented later. Anything else? All right, let us join together with hymn number 693, verses 1 and 2. call to worship. We're gathered here not because we have seen fit to choose Christ, but because he has looked upon us and called us to be his own. The joy of those who hear the call of Christ be with you all. Our psalm for today is part of Psalm 139 and the children have got some noisemakers. We're going to use them. 
Lachlan, need your bells. Okay? Whenever we say rejoice, our God is good, I want to hear some bells. Okay? So we'll have a practice. He doesn't want to. No. Sorry. <laughs> okay, ready? Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. Okay? So whenever they say that, I want to hear your bells. So let us read our psalm. Lord, you see right through me and completely know me. You understand what I'm thinking long before I understand myself. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with me. You are with me wherever I go. Beside me when I go to bed, everything I do you recognise. My tongue never wags without your hearing. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. You hold me in your arms, your love is firmly round me. All this is too much for me. It is beyond my understanding. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. Where can I go from you? If I live on the streets or a park bench, if I took off at speed of light travelling through outer space, you are there. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. If I fear something awful will happen, if I think I can hide in the dark, my darkness will shine like the day, for with you darkness becomes light. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. How precious are your plans for me. Whenever I wake up to what's happening, I find I am still with you. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. Lord, sort me out and weigh up all my ideas. Tear away whatever is unloving in me and lead me into your everlasting future. Rejoice, our God is good and is always with us. And if you like to put your bells away for a little while, we'll come back and use them again later. We come now to our prayer of confession. The Apostle Paul tells us that our bodies are the very temples of the Holy Spirit. So let us then confess the misuse of these precious temples. Let us pray. Most loving God, we confess to you and to each other that we have not lived with the honour worthy of your temples. We acknowledge that at times we have harboured the spirits of greed and self-importance, of discord and belligerence, pride and contempt, self-righteousness and rumour-mongering, lust and indolence, discontent and envy, ingratitude, anxiety and cynicism. Please search us and know us this day. By your spirit overturn and inject everything alien in your eyes. We ask that you will forgive those follies which degrade our life, unclutter our inner space and take possession. Make us yours that we may be more truly our own. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. God's grace and mercy displayed in Christ Jesus stands firm for you and for me. Lift up your hearts and live as the cleansed and renovated temples of the Holy Spirit. Be assured of his grace and forgiveness. This I declare in the name of the Saviour who calls you to be his friends agents of all things loving. Thanks to God for his great love. <coughs> Before we came to Australia, I knew one Australian poem. What's in a name, she says, and then she sighs and clasps her little hands and rolls her eyes. A rose, she says, be any other name would smell so sweet. I'm sure you know that one. We're thinking a bit about names. You may have noticed, I've got a banner up with some names on it. 
you may not have noticed that your name was on it. Yes. That's all our children. So um, we're thinking of names and being called. Now, when you're at school, did your teacher call the role? Yes. Think about what you might have said when the teacher called the role. Kira, does your teacher call a role? Mark a role at the start? What do you have to answer? Here. Okay. You have to say the same, Lachlan? Here? How about you two? Uh, in my class, we're able to say pretty much whatever you want, so I normally just try to say good day. Right. Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> so, if I call your name, then maybe you might need to answer. Linda. Ian. There should be more than one answer. <laughs> um, Daphne. She waves. Um, Robert. <laughs> Malcolm. Simon. No. Um, Judy M. Present. Judy A. Present. So when we hear a name, we respond. And that's a bit of what we're thinking about today. So the peace of the Lord be who calls you by name be with each of you. And just acknowledge your neighbours with peace. <laughs> now, our Old Testament reading today is the calling of Samuel. And so we will have some characters. Roger is going to be Eli. <laughs> Hannah is going to be Hannah, I think. Uh, Isaac is going to be Samuel. And the voice of God will appear somewhere. Oh, we forgot a mic. Never mind, you have to shout. Okay, so, one of my favourite Bible stories is about a boy called Samuel. And um, Eli... Maybe if we use this few over here. It's all right, it doesn't matter. Oh, there. Jenny Twala. Okay. Yeah, so. Here's Eli. And here's Hannah. And um, some of you, of course, will remember this story quite well and remember that. Samuel's mother was Hannah. And Hannah wanted a son so much that she kept asking God to give her a son. And she promised that if she had a son, she would give him back to God to serve, the, serve him for the whole of his life. And Hannah had a son, and she kept her promise to God. Now, when Samuel was old enough, she took him to the temple. He's bringing his bed with him. <coughs> Thank you. And Eli took him in. Hannah went home. And Eli's bedtime teaching Samuel as he grew up all the things he needed to know. Now at night time, Samuel slept in a small room at the side of the temple. So we'll send him to bed. You. Now, one night when Samuel was sleeping, he heard someone calling his name. Samuel! Samuel! 
Now, it, Eli was getting a bit older, and so Samuel thought he was calling him and needed some help. So Samuel had to go and see if Eli needed help. And he said, here I am, you called me. I didn't call you, said Eli, go back to bed. So he went back to bed. Again, God called Samuel. 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 So Samuel jumped out of bed and hurried to Eli. Here I am, you called me. No, I didn't call you, go back to bed, Eli answered a second time. Then a third time, God called Samuel. 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 And again, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Finally, Eli realised it was God calling Samuel. And he told Samuel. Go and lie down. If you hear the call again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and sure enough, he heard the voice of God calling. Samuel! Samuel! This time, Samuel just sat up and listened, and he answered as God had told him, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God talked to Samuel and told him some of the things he wanted him to do as he grew up. Some people think that God only calls grown-ups, adults. And that's why I like this story of Samuel. Because Samuel was young when God called him. God knows your name just as he knew Samuel's name. God still calls boys and girls as well as grown-ups saying, come and follow me. God may not call in a voice that we hear with our ears, but a voice in our hearts and our minds. So listen out for God's call and answer just as Samuel did. Here I am, I am listening. Let us pray. Dear God, today we are listening for your call. Maybe you have something special for us to do. When you call, we will answer. Here I am. I am listening. Amen. Thank you to our helpers. And we will sing. And this time, during the chorus, boys and girls, you can use your bells. When we're singing praise our maker, praise our saviour part, you can give us some, some music with it. Okay? Because this is a dancing song. Thank you.
Let us hear our readings for this morning. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians was written to deal with the problems of Christian life and faith that had arisen in the church which Paul had established. Today's reading, under the heading of Glorify God in Your Body, deals with the matter of sexual morality and family life and is addressed in chapters 6, verses 12 to 20. So let us hear what message there is in today's reading. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, The two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, you are not on your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honour God with your bodies. And our Gospel reading for today comes from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to leave Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can any good come from there? Nathaniel said. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, Here truly is the Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, but you will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. God, call us by name as he did Philip and Nathaniel. Lord, help us to hear your call. Uh, We have here a stained glass window that was made about 1899 for the Victoria Road United Reformed Church in Newport, Wales. It's actually, because I couldn't make it big enough, a bit hard to see, but it's 
the picture of Nathaniel and Philip um, under the fig tree, Jesus watching them, and the sign above says, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. Um, and that's the background of our thinking today. So where do we hear God? How do we hear God? How do we hear him call to us? Now, one of our first thoughts has got to be just like Samuel experienced. God calls us in the silence. God comes to us in the silences. There is an old saying, silence is golden. Now, if that is true, many of us live in extreme poverty because there is little silence in our hectic lives. It's all noise and more noise and more noise. Though maybe this past year has given you some times of silence, some times of quiet, some times to reflect. During this time of the lockdown, have we been forced into periods of quietness and silence? Now, we live just off Hallett's Way. And as soon as the lockdown finished, we noticed the increase in traffic up and down Hallett's Way. Our silent retreat has returned to the noise of modern living. Since the changes caused by the Industrial Revolution, and more recently, especially the Electronic Revolution, people have been surrounded by noise. Think about it. How many people live with their mobile phone clamped to their ears? Noise is not just an affliction. For many people, it's an addiction. But Samuel didn't have that as a problem. At dusk, the market closed. The services ended. Everyone, everyone went home except the priest Eli and his helper, the child Samuel. All was silent. It was a silence in which it was possible to hear the voice of God, to hear a voice calling in his soul, Samuel, Samuel. After mistaking this call as Eli's voice, he was able to answer, Lord, speak, your servant is listening. Silence is one of the ways in which God approaches us, addresses us, soothes us, stirs us, calls us, restores us. In the silence, the word can speak. Because silence doesn't come readily in our noisy, frenetic world, it takes self-discipline to create space and silence in our lives. If we're not inclined towards self-discipline, then let us not complain about the apparent absence of God. Silence cannot be found without some effort on our part. We only have to stop to listen and to hear the call. And that's what Philip did. Philip heard a call and he shared it with Nathaniel. Now, just before this happened, John the Baptist had pointed, out to Je pointed to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God. And from that moment, what we hear about are the people that God called to follow. So Jesus finds Philip, just like he finds us. He seeks us out even when we're not looking for him. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus came and sought us out. He found us and placed his call upon our lives. Once Philip had heard the call, just like Andrew, he couldn't keep the good news to himself. So he went and found his friend Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel came from Bethsaida, which was in Cana. He didn't hold a very great opinion 
about down and out Nazareth. Nazareth was the lower end of the scale in social living. It was an undistinguished place. It wasn't the kind of place where you expect great things to happen. So Nathaniel's response, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Instead of arguing with him, Philip simply said, come and see. Now, some people have a problem about Nathaniel because the other Gospels don't mention him. It has been argued that Nathaniel is simply a symbol, an ideal Israelite standing for all who are willing to move from their traditional ways to accept Jesus as the Christ. But most likely, because most people in those days, as today, had two names, he was probably also known as Bartholomew. And that's how the other Gospels refer to him. Because Nathaniel and Bartholomew are both described as Philip's friend. Nathaniel was amazed that Jesus had seen him talking to Philip. He was amazed that Jesus had appeared to see into his mind and his thoughts. It wasn't just that Jesus had seen him talking with Philip, but that Jesus had actually understood him. So he responded to the call directly, the call that came to his heart. He heard the call and he came. Was he then the idea Israelite? Whatever else, it's true that Nathaniel stands for the Israelite, who hearing the call of Jesus was cleansed of pride and prejudice, and saw in Jesus the one who satisfied the longings of his waiting, seeking heart. For Christians, God's incomparable approach is through Jesus. Nothing equals this. Nothing is more certain or more reliable. The words and the deeds and the unique person of Jesus have been for many generations a veritable highway for the coming of God into human experience. Jesus calls us, even as he called Philip, just as he called Nathaniel. He calls today, follow me. To each one of us, Jesus says, come on, come along. Find out what you will discover on this adventure of faith. Follow me. Learn from me as my disciples. Grow in your knowledge and faith. Jesus calls us to keep on following him in a lifelong journey of faith. He leads the way, every step of the way, all the days of our lives. Follow me. Hear the authority in his voice. Hear his personal care for you. Jesus is calling you to be his disciple how can you say no? When Jesus found Philip, he called him to follow. And what did Philip do next? What was his response? Immediately he goes to find his friend Nathaniel. Jesus finds Philip, then Philip finds Nathaniel. Is that how we respond to Jesus' call? How do we hear that call today and how do we respond? Now, I started by talking about silence. In the quiet spaces that we make for prayer and meditation, we hear this call. We must check this out by what God says in Christ. If it fits, trust it. If it does not, reject it. And I stress that point. Whatever divine melody appears to come to us from the wider realms of life must be assessed in the music of Christ Jesus. If it's in tune with Jesus, sing it. If it's off key, repudiate it. When I was a teenager seeking to know how to respond to God's call, someone said, if when you make a decision and feel peaceful within, trust that is what God calls you to do. But if you still feel unhappy about it, then question 
whether this is what you are really called to do. Paul tells us to look within because we are God's temple. However, when we look within and try to explore the truth of God, we have to be careful. It is easy to wander off into petty half-truths, sentimental quarter-truths, and even self-deceit. Maybe this is what we want to do, so we decide it's God's will. Are we sure, really sure, because it's easy to misrepresent what we think what God wants if it meets our own desires. The one utterly reliable way to hear God's call is through the one who is truly the Son of God. If our inner truths resonate with God's truth, then let's celebrate. If not, do not entertain it, but expel it. Now, God calls us in many, many different ways. There are many more than I have even lightly touched on today. You and I are most fortunate people. We can be open to these divine approaches without caution, for we have Christ to measure our experience, to help us grasp the authentic and reject the false hopes and unworthy fears. Trust him and all will be well. So listen out for that call and respond. In the song from the Iona community, The Summons, sometimes known as the call, we commit ourselves. Lord, your summons echo true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Let this be our prayer as today we sing the summons.
morning, everyone. Let us pray now for ourselves and others. There'll be silent spaces for your personal prayers. Oh God, after a long, difficult day, feeling uncertain, perhaps exhausted, our attention is drawn to a beautiful sunset, the sky radiant with pink and orange coloured clouds. Could that be you seeking our attention, inviting us to pause in awe and thankfulness, filling us with joy and peace? Thank you. On the other hand, we reflect that for those suffering through drought, such a sunset is a message of yet more hardship. Let us pray for those who do not have enough water for their needs. For those sick or dying due to the effects of drought. And for those who greedily take more than their share of water, that they will consider others. O oh God, life is so precious. When we hold a young baby in our arms, our hearts fill with love, with hopes for that tiny child. Could that be you, God, calling us? Inviting us to pray with thankfulness for our children and grandchildren. To pray for Kylie and Simon, Timothy and Luke, whose baby will be born soon. And that the theatres in Bacchus Marsh Hospital will be open at that time. Calling us to pray for people everywhere with the task of nurturing young lives. We are aware of babies and children who are unloved or in danger. Let us pray for them that your compassion will reach them through your faithful people. Oh God, you know that when someone we love is very unwell, it is so worrying. We can't find the words to say but we gently take their hand and gaze at them with compassion. Could it be that in that action we're responding to your call to love? Let's pray for those we know who are suffering today that you will reveal to us how to respond to their needs. Then, O oh God, we see and hear through the media of many situations of need on this earth you have created. When we feel helpless and deep sadness, when we long for things to be different, to ease others' suffering, can we see that thinking as a response to your call? As we pray in the silence now, show us ways to help bring hope and renewal. Oh 
Holy God, when someone we love dies, we can feel terribly empty and so cold. And then someone comes and gives us a hug and we feel the warmth, the love. A neighbour brings a plate of food. Someone sends a pot plant with beautiful white flowers. Thoughtful cards and letters and calls are made. All these actions are responses to your call, as is our gratitude. Let us pray now for those we know who are grieving. And finally, God, we pray for ourselves. You know our needs. Help us to differentiate our needs from our wants. There is never a time when we do not need you, O God. May we continue to say faithfully, here I am, I am listening. And we make these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, um, something I forgot to say earlier, when I mentioned the names of the children up, up the very top is Joseph. Joseph was born last Monday to Luger and Aaron. Um, older brother Samuel is 14 months old. Aaron, um, Samuel was to have been baptised on the Sunday, which became the first one of the lockdown. So we haven't seen very much of Samuel, um, but very soon they're hoping to be able to introduce their new baby to you as well as their old one. So that's our newest member. Um, the other thing is that if we listen hard to information about masks, keep your fingers crossed, we might not have to wear them next Sunday. But wait and find out. We'll have to wait to see what the Synod actually tells us. But it um, wasn't listed as one of the places. But we'll probably find we still have to wear them. <laughs> or we wear them if we sh wish to. Um, dedication of our offering. Um, as you're aware, we are now in the situation whereby we either have it either put your offering in the plate as you come in or as you go out and also um, many of us are making direct donations but of course our offerings are not just our money it's also our whole life so let's dedicate our offerings of gifts and self let us pray Lord God we give you thanks that we have heard you call into us. We ask that you will help us each day of our lives as we step out in faith, walking in your way, trying to serve you to the best of our ability. And so, Father, we bring to you the gifts of our lives, our whole being, all that we have and all that we are. We dedicate to your use and your service. And we do this in the name of Christ who gave himself for us. Amen.
And if you like to stand for the sending out. Don't you know that you are the temples of the Holy Spirit, filled with the joy of God's love? Go glorify God in your bodies, which is the most reasonable worship. With the grace of Christ Jesus, I bless you. Amen. With the love of God, I bless you. Amen. With the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, I bless you. Amen. And we shall go out with joy and use our instruments and we'll sing it three times. <laughs> <laughs>